The state seems to suggest that a bunch of people all came together to commit crimes. Just a big conspiracy. We're all going to come together and we're going to be a racketeering organization. That's not the case. Now, let me be clear. Of course, crimes were committed. Crimes were committed by people with YSL tattoos on their face. Crimes were committed by people with, that use YSL emojis on social media. Crimes, I'm sure, were committed by people that use the word slap. But that's not the issue here. The issue is whether Shannon Stilwell knowingly and willfully conspired to be part of this RICO organization. We've heard from different young men, and, and we're, again, we heard from them in the year 2024, talking about things that happened in 2012, 2013. So please keep in mind, when you see a 28-year-old testifying in 2024, we're talking about maybe a 16-year-old back in 2012. And we've heard testimony from people from Cleveland Avenue. We heard from Walter Murphy. We heard from Trontavia Stevens. We heard testimony from people from Capitol Homes. We heard from Quindarius Zachary. We heard from Antonio Sledge. We know that my client, Mr. Stilwell, is from Thomasville. We know that he was raised by his grandmother. His mother was never part of his life due to her drug addiction. We know about these communities, about poverty, about the lack of education. I'm not trying to paint with a broad brush. This does not apply to everyone in these communities. But as a whole, we know the struggles that these communities have had. Lack of education, underemployment, drug addiction, kids looking for food, sharing clothes with peers, hopelessness, a sad, tacit acceptance that it's either rap prison, or death. That's the reality where a lot of these kids at the time were living. And the state, throughout their presentation of this case, has played several videos of people, of young people, in parking lots, at parks. Some of them might have a gun, using foul language. Someone might be smoking marijuana. Some might be saying slap. A lot of times people are, and it's kind of sad to watch, a lot of people talking about all the stuff they got, when we all know they really don't have anything. About all the cars they own. Remember that one gentleman? Oh, yeah, I got my, oh, I'm getting my daughter this. I'm getting my son that car. You know, cat. We saw those videos, and I'm watching all these videos, and I'm wondering, you know, what's the point? Why is the state playing this? just to show like bad kids or who they feel are bad kids, just to show who they feel are future criminals. Like what's the point of these videos that are really sad to watch? And then they played this video and it's marked 54W and I'm gonna ask Mr. Kokomo to pull it up but not play it yet. And it's a video where you see a group of people hanging out in the park in a parking lot in a park, and you see Jeffrey Williams. Shannon Stilwell's not in this video. And you see Jeffrey Williams leaning on a car. And you see his emaciated body. You see his teeth that are rotten. And he's wearing pants that are clearly too short, too small, clearly been handed down, traded. They didn't come out of Fitz Plaza. You see him wearing an Alabama Letterman jacket. And I'm not talking about like the cool Letterman jacket that you might get at Mitchell and Ness. That's where you get like high priced sporting goods, throwback stuff. Not cool like that. Like one that was probably made in the 80s. The Letterman is, the sleeves are all nasty. And the thing comes down to like his navy. And people are picking at him. Not, not in a harmful way, 
but picking at him, picking at his clothes. Go ahead, Mr. Kokomo. <laughs> What happens there? I think about when I was young. If I had to struggle, if I had to wear clothes that I was embarrassed about, if I was embarrassed about anything, I would hide, I would run. I would stay inside. I'd be ashamed. I might lash out at people picking at me. But what happens there? Jeffrey Williams takes those clothes, those tattered clothes, those old clothes, those ill-fitting clothes, and he twists it. He turns it around. Now, nah, these aren't rags. This ain't nothing to be ashamed of. You can take it down. This is white boy swag. This is swag. Think about that for a second. What that means, and I'm not suggesting Shannon Stillwell saw that video, but that mindset. I'm not ashamed where I came from. In fact, I'm going to turn it into a positive. I'm going to turn it into a sense of pride. And lo and behold, what happens? Everyone starts wearing the skinny jeans. Now think about if you're Walter Murphy. Think about if you're Trontavious Stevens in that Cleveland Avenue neighborhood. You're struggling, you're dealing with the same things that Jeffrey Williams is. And you're ashamed and you don't feel good about yourself. But then all of a sudden you see someone with confidence. Someone that's not ashamed. And all of a sudden, you know what else? They can rap. And people are starting to pay attention. And the shows start being booked. And one second it's in, at, around the corner. Next second it's up the street. And then all of a sudden it's downtown Atlanta. Think about the pride. If you have nothing and you see someone that you know making it. And making it on his terms with that level of confidence. Now think about if you're Shannon Stillwell, raised by your grandmother, facing many of the same issues that Jeffrey's talking about, that he's rapping about, that all these young men in Cleveland Avenue are facing, many of the same challenges. And then you also want to be a rapper. And all of a sudden, this person that you can identify with, this person that has the confidence you wish you had, this person that's taking everything negative and turning it into a positive. And then he raps too. And it's all blowing up in your backyard. And you want to be a musician. And you want to go into the studio. And you want studio time. And you know Jeffrey Williams and his friends have studio time. Because now they have backing. And studio time ain't cheap. And you want connections. And you know he has connections. And you know those connections have paid off. B Slime. We know he's been on songs with B Slime. Vito, a songwriter for 300 Entertainment. Dolly, Rooney Lee, a signed artist. Shannon's been on songs with him. If you're Shannon Stillwell, isn't that exactly where you'd want to be? Isn't that exactly who you'd want to associate with? Not to conspire to violate any RICO laws. You want to be there because he's doing what you want to do and you are identifying with him.